Hey guys, it's Jeff Gardner. I'm shooting this video today at a different angle. Uh, for some reason, a lot of people were asking me, oh, F. Gardner, are you on a green screen? Uh, so no, uh, F. Gardner's not on a green screen. Here, I could even pick up the pillows here. Um, I, I guess you could say that these are CGI'd in, but uh, no, this is not a green screen or some sort of uh, movie set or like a fake like Truman Show set, no. Um, so I did a video asking what you guys wanted to hear me talk about. And one of the first comments that caught my eye was, oh, F. Gardner, you should talk about, um, that I should talk about They Live. That's a, yeah, that's a great movie. That's a film by uh, John Carpenter. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, like the, he did like the original like Halloween and let's see, he did The Thing, the remake from like the 80s and Escape from New York and Escape from LA. Yeah, those are both great. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I love everything he's done. Uh, for some reason, so I hear people say that they, they didn't like Escape from LA as much as Escape from New York, but I like them both especially the ending, uh, Escape from L.A., yeah. I like when things have, like, really weird uh, endings. I'm not going to spoil it. Or, like, really surprising endings. I like when things take a chance like that. Like, it, like just do something really out there. Um, in fact, uh, the new Halloween movie I saw was like that. I don't know if John Carpenter had involvement in, in that. Like, I know that he, so he did, like, the original one. But the new Halloween, I heard people were saying... Oh, the new Halloween is terrible. I saw it and I thought, whoa, I really like that. I thought it was great. Uh, Halloween ends. Um, yeah, that was what the new one was called. Uh, yeah, it was really, I kind of like it for the same reason I'm, I'm describing. I liked uh, Escape from LA. Like it just like took weird chances. Like it's a story I would never have expected uh, with Halloween ends. So I like when things take chances like that. And anyway, back to, um, yeah, so they live. Yeah, so that movie, it's about, I'm not gonna spoil it, just the general idea is like, a guy finds a pair of sunglasses and they're like supernatural sunglasses. I forget if they're magic or what, but they're like supernatural, like paranormal sunglasses. And he puts them on and he can see, he looks at everything and he sees like signs that say like, obey and like, uh, that you should just like uh like consume like products and uh just like uh don't pay attention to things and so he puts these sunglasses on and it's like he's seeing reality like it's picking up like the little hints at like deception in the world or whatever and uh yeah that's a fascinating movie like just as like for pure entertainment but also the way it makes you think like that and yeah is it as a Buddhist, it kind of makes me think like how, so like Buddhism, how it says like everything's like an illusion and everything here is to keep you here, keep you distracted. So like the more you want certain things, the more you're going to be attached to yourself and everything like that. So it sort of makes me think like that, like how even good things can like keep you here and uh, in the whatever. It's kind of like the matrix, samsara, that's the word they use in uh, Buddhism. I was explaining that in one of my previous videos where I got into Buddhism, but it kind of makes me think like that as a Buddhist regarding the movie They Live. And yeah, the guy gets, yeah, so he has this magic pair of sunglasses <clears throat> and he can see like how the deception in the world or whatever and how like everyone's like just trying to be like controlled like a slave and so yeah as a buddhist it makes me think yeah there's a lot of truth in that maybe other people have different interpretations and that's okay that's part of what makes movies literature whatever anything cool is when people have different interpretations like that uh yeah the, and the fact that it could be interpreted like so many different ways is part of what makes it so good Maybe John Carpenter has his own interpretation of that movie. Uh, I'm sure he does, or maybe he deliberately left it ambiguous or something, I don't know. If you know the answer to that, yeah. The, so, yeah. yo, shout out to John Carpenter if you're watching this. You rock, F. Gardner loves you. Yeah, 
Uh, I've done so many, you've done so many great movies and stuff. Yeah, so John Carpenter, if you're watching this video, yeah, comment down below. Uh, let me know, like, what was that movie about? What did that mean to you? Uh, like, what's your what's your interpretation as the, the guy who made that? Unless you want to keep it ambiguous, I can kind of, I totally understand that, actually. Like, if you think maybe, maybe, because people will ask me about some things in <clears throat> my books, like called The Crocodile and the rest of <clears throat> the novels I've written, the horror novels. And sometimes I will leave things like deliberately ambiguous. Like, uh, I'll use a famous example, like uh, the ending of like 2001 Space Odyssey. Even though I don't believe in outer space, I still think that's a great movie. Like I said before, uh, I don't believe in outer space because I'm like a Buddhist flat earther. I think space is fake, it doesn't exist, that there's just a, a dome above us. Anyway, uh, yeah, so 2001 Space Odyssey, I can still appreciate that as a good movie, even though I think it's space doesn't exist, but um, <clears throat> the ending of that's like really ambiguous, and I've heard all sorts of interpretations about that. Same with like The Shining. I think that's about the moon landing, a lot of people do. Uh, or well, the moon landing. It's, the moon landing never happened. There's a Stanley Kubrick trying to tell us that he was probably like, I sort of talked about that before, but like how he made it, but he probably didn't want to. It was probably like they didn't give him a choice. The uh, Illuminati didn't give him a choice in the matter, but he wanted to let people know the truth. <coughs> yeah, so John Carpenter, <clears throat> yeah, all, all his movies are great, and They Live is one of the more underrated ones, I guess, compared to... I mean, all of his stuff is good. Yeah, what else did he... Oh, Assault on Precinct 13? Yeah, that, that was John Carpenter. Um, yeah, all his movies are really good. Uh, yeah, Escape from New York, Escape from L.A., Halloween. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Uh, F. Gardner loves John Carpenter. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, he's really impressive, too, because, like, he directs his movies and... I'm not sure, does he write the screenplays too? I forget. For some reason I want to say he does, but I could be mistaken. I don't know if it's for all of them, but so he directs them and probably produces or is an executive producer or whatever on a lot of them. And I remember hearing or reading somewhere that he'll even compose the soundtracks. I'm I That like floors me when people say, because people tell me all the time, they say like, oh, F. Gardner, you've written so many books. How do you how do you do this? How are you you so consistently like good at writing all these books and and they're like, they're just like oh that's so much work I, I like I'm they're, they're just so impressed by that I can do that and I'm you know of course flattered and I, that's oh well thank you yeah it's, it is a lot of work uh, but uh, John Carpenter wow like composing like the soundtrack to all your movies in addition to like whatever else he's doing for some of them like writing the uh, screenplays, the scripts, and uh, if he's the producer too, or whatever. Uh, so direct, like directing a movie, that's already like a full-time job. And, well, it is, and like that alone takes such dedication and he's composing the soundtracks to them too. Wow, that, that's, that's, that impresses like even me, even F. Gardner, like I'm blown away by just how committed John Carpenter must be to his, his work. He, he, he clearly is uh, really dedicated to the craft of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, cinema, of uh, filmmaking, and uh, yeah, in all those different regards, directing and composing his music and a lot of them. Yeah, he's a man of many talents, like how he's like a super genius, not just for directing, but for so many, all, all these tons of different things. And uh, Sean Carpenter, <clears throat> I'm aware that, I remember hearing somewhere that, I think it was like an interview I read with uh, that he did or whatever, where he talked about video games and uh, that he really likes video games. And he, they were asking him and he said, oh, he's saying like, oh yeah, I love Sonic the Hedgehog. And, and uh, yeah, wow, so he has great taste in video games. Like, I love Sonic the Hedgehog too. Yeah, like, that'd be cool to meet John Carpenter someday. We could just chill and play uh, uh, Breakout. I still have the Sega Genesis from the 90s. That was, that was the first video game system I ever got. It was when I was a kid in the 90s. And yeah, I had all these uh, 
every, everything on it. I had uh, all the Sonic games, uh, the Shinobi games, Vector Man, what else? Toe Jam and Earl, so many great games. Uh, the Fantasy Star games. Yeah, uh, Sega is awesome. Like, I, I love all the. Uh, all those old Sega Genesis games and uh, but yeah so John Carpenter yeah well he has really good taste in video games I'm really impressed that John Carpenter is a big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog because that's uh, that's something I've noticed that <clears throat> I don't know why this is but there's something to this that like creative geniuses really seem to like Sonic I've noticed that time and time again. I like Sonic. And no, I don't mean that as like a prideful, whatever, vanity, like pride thing, arrogant thing, saying like, oh, I'm, I'm a creative genius. I'm just saying like, I think of myself as an artist because I am, I'm, I'm a writer. Writing is a form of art. And it's just so, so many times you'll encounter, if you talk to like a lot of these really artistic types, these uh the, they love like uh sonic like if they're really into the arts artistic and they they love when that, that's not limited to any one craft it could be writing it could be a novelist like me it could be a director like john carpenter uh well he john carpenter's many he's he composes his uh, the music to his movies and everything and produces them and writes the screenplays, all those other things too. And, uh, well, I guess in a way I'm sort of a, an artist and I'm artistic in multiple ways, like how I do the book covers for for my books. Like I, I'll draw those. And <clears throat> a lot of the time uh, people will view it as like, oh, they're separate crafts. That like, these this is one craft writing and this is the other. Uh, drawing or painting, illustrating, like, but, and I get that, like, you could, it's kind of like the same, like, uh, oh, you could be, you, it's, it's, or, or just the idea that it takes, you could study one thing and master it, and it was sure, but sometimes you can, you can master multiple certain styles, it's not always that you only need to do one thing that's artistic, like, <clears throat> it's true in <clears throat> some like professions, I guess, like, so like the idea of like the saying like, oh, a uh, jack of all trades or master of none, or like where you're saying, oh, just pick one or like in martial arts, I, I took martial arts for the, much of my life, like how the, 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 there's this idea that like, there's like two schools of thought. One is like, oh, you should just stick to one style and master it whether that's Taekwondo, Karate, Hapkido, Judo, Kung Fu, uh, you know, like, because you can study that your whole life and not, and still have not, or still have more to do. You, uh, so you should master one style versus like MMA, mixed martial arts, where you just, it's everything, but that's like, the argument against that would be, it's like, oh, that's a jack of all trades, but not a master, a master of none if, if you're, you're not focusing on a single style. So those are positions some people will have, like there's, but then the positions for it would be, no, they're all they're all good styles. You should learn them all, or you should, you know, or you should still learn as much as you can from different things. And sure, I get that, that I mean, it's, it's not that one argument is right or wrong, it's just different things work for different people. Some people excel at different things. I just so happen to, yeah, I'm a great writer and people always tell me they love my, my book covers. Uh, for all my books, I call the Crocodile, call the Arcade, call the Kappa, uh, all of my horror novels. People are they're really impressed by like how striking the covers are. They're like, wow, how how can you, how can you you can write you wrote these and you did the covers. They're always impressed. So I guess I kind of understand that. And a lot of the time, these people really into the arts. Yeah, they'll like Sonic a real lot. Sonic the Hedgehog. And I don't know why that is. For some reason, I have absolutely no idea, but th there's truth to that, that they go hand in hand. Like, if you, you become a really artistic type of individual, you have this all this talent, and you, you want to be a novelist or 
a filmmaker or um, a composer, video game maker, whatever, uh, painter. This, I don't even know if it's necessarily limited to the arts, but it certainly happens a lot uh, that they end up like in the Sonic. Yeah, and it's like, I don't even think it's a generational thing because like John Carpenter, he's, uh, I'm not sure how old he is, but he's older than I am. And there are people younger than myself that like, they'll, they'll like, oh, I love Sonic the Hedgehog. These, these games are so good. F. Gardner, have you played these? And I'll tell them, yeah, oh, if, if I've been playing them since the 90s, since that came out. And uh, so there's definitely truth to that, that it's like it transcends generations. So it's not a generational thing. It's certainly not a regional thing or a cultural thing because Sonic, that's from Japan. And Japan makes all, Japan makes all the best stuff, basically, like, Pokemon's from Japan, too, like Sonic, Pokemon, like a, a lot of great old, old Japanese movies, like, uh, you know, um, Seven Samurai, uh, Rashomon, um, Yojimbo, let me think, Onibaba, Tetsuo the Iron Man, the Ring and The Grudge, the Japanese versions, Godzilla, it goes on and on. There's so many great classic Japanese, not just uh, all these things, video games, movies, music, manga, like, yeah, manga, like, uh, I talked about anime before, most anime is, like, based on manga, so you have manga, like, Dragon Ball Z, and, and everything, so, yeah, there is, so it can't be a cultural or, or regional thing, if it comes from Japan, and here, I'm in Chicago, I'm in America, I'm, you know, born and raised in Chicago, yet I love Sonic, it's, it's Japanese, and so it's like it transcends cultures, and everybody, like, there are people in um, England, Ireland, Russia, uh, Germany, you know, everywhere, Australia, uh, everywhere, that they love Sonic the Hedgehog. They just can't get enough of it. F. Gardner can't either. I love Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, so it's like, it's not even just the one thing. Like the video games, sometimes it'll be the Sonic the Hedgehog comic books or the uh, the cartoon. And the, there's been a few, several cartoons. Like in the, in the 90s, I used to watch those. Yeah, I remember being really confused when, <coughs> I think the first time I ever... The first time I ever remember reading anything, or at least looking at the TV guide, was like, I was watching on TV, I was already a fan of, like, Sonic, and I wanted to watch more, and I remember there's TV guide, and I remember trying to figure out, oh, when is this going to be on next? Uh, I've got to watch this. Like, I, I, need to, I need to watch it more. It's, uh, it's just, it's way past cool. And... I saw a TV guide it's saying like, oh, this uh, Sonic is on at uh, whatever, 9 a.m. on whatever this day. And, and I did that and I remember being confused because there are two different Sonic shows in the 90s, in the early 90s. There is one that was more like comedic and then there's one that was like darker, kind of like edgier. And I love them both, but it was, that was kind of confusing as a kid. It was like, there are two shows, I think, yeah, one was called, yeah, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and uh, let me think. Were they both just called The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog? It's been a while since I've watched those. But uh, yeah, one was the darker and edgier one. One was more comedic, and I would watch them both, and I love them both. And uh, yeah, this uh, I need to rewatch those. I guess those, yeah, those are great shows. The great video games too, and the comics, everything. It's like Pokemon, where it has a bunch of different things, like, and it's good in all of them. The video games, the, the comics, everything. The cartoons, or anime with Pokemon, I guess. But, um, yeah, that was interesting. It was like a surprise. I didn't know which Sonic show I was going to watch. I wonder if John Carpenter watched that, too. I know he, he would have been an adult back in the 90s, <clears throat> since he already made, like, Halloween in, like, the 80s and stuff, so, like, like, you know, he's older than I am, so he's an adult, but I wonder, did he have the same kind of experience where, like, 
like he's watching on his TV. He's like, oh man, this this show's great. I I love Sonic the Hedgehog. I gotta watch more of this. And I wonder if he had the same or similar experience where he may have like looked it up on the TV guide because like nowadays you could just look at anything up on on the internet. But back then it wasn't like that. Uh, yeah, so it must be weird for people that like. What's the generation growing up now? I'm 33, so I guess I'm a millennial. I think that's, yeah. I don't know if I necessarily agree with the criteria for that because like, it's millennials just like what, you're born, like cut, well, cut off as a millennial, I guess. But it's, so that's what, like 20 years uh, time frame or, or something like that? Or 20, oh no, 25 years, is that a generation? I think that's it. This, that still seems too broad, because that's like someone 20 whatever years older than the age different between myself. That's not the same generation. Yeah, so that's kind of bullshit when they say like, this age, this time frame, this is what makes a millennial, and this is what makes, <coughs> uh, what is it, Gen X, and then Gen Z, Zoomers, and like, like boomers, they call them, like baby boomers, Zoomers. That's too broad, like, generations don't work like that. I don't know who started, who's, who made that criteria, they just, they claim that a generation is like 25 years or so. Yeah, that seems arbitrary to me. That, that doesn't make any sense. Because if there's 25, or even less than that, difference between people, they're not the same generation. They're gonna they're, they're, there's gonna be a generational difference within the generation that doesn't make any sense. There's like a, there's like at least two like sub generations within what would be considered millennial or any generation for that matter. Yeah, that needs to get broken up into two or three separate generations because that doesn't make any sense. But they always I always hear those terms millennial. Uh, Baby Boomer, Gen X, Gen Z, Zoomer. It's wrong. It's just, it doesn't make sense that there could be that big of a difference. I don't know how that started. It's silly. Uh, but at my point, point I'm back to what I was saying. Yeah, John Carpenter, I wonder if he is like that. He's sitting down on his couch or whatever, and he wants to watch Sonic, and he if he got surprised too when he, because he didn't know if there's two different Sonic shows back then. I don't know. Yeah, I'd like to know the answer. So again, yeah, John Carpenter, if you're checking out my YouTube channel, yeah, let me know. Let Up Gardner know what that was like, uh, your first encounter with uh, Sonic and like, and if you watched, uh, and if you watched the uh, 90s cartoons back in the day, the, yeah, all those cartoons were good back in the day, not just Sonic and Pokemon, but like everything. There's the the Batman animated series. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that that was rad. I love that. And but everything, like Power Rangers. That's not a cartoon, but like uh that was really cool. Ninja Turtles, of course. Um Yeah, it all it seems like everything was good but like all all the shows but and books too video games, music, every like I was saying before though, the nineties just had all the best stuff. Um, yeah, I wonder what people are doing now, but instead, like, maybe, probably just rewatching or watching for the first time for them, I guess. Like, the younger generations, they're probably, I don't know, are they even watching? Do they have new stuff of their own? It seems like they, they kind of have to, but it makes me wonder, like, that things are just so good back then. Like, why would they watch new stuff? Why don't they, why wouldn't, why wouldn't they just watch the stuff I'm talking about? Like, just look up shows from the 90s and movies from the 90s and games, video games. Yeah, but the they must seem weird though, like looking at the, the whole idea, I said looking at a TV guide to people, uh, the generation or whatever, however you want to define a generation, younger than myself, like if they don't have the faintest idea, the faintest conception of what like a TV guide is in the, because like now you can just look things up on the internet or like, on the remote on the TV, how you can do, um, what is it, Netflix and on demand, uh, or 
whatever those things. The, the I guess that's that's just the way technology evolved. And uh, yeah, same with like Blockbuster for that matter. Like that's a total. That's gonna be a totally alien concept, or it or it, it is now to people growing up. Yeah, I imagine John Carpenter probably has fond memories of like going to like Blockbuster and stuff too, like that. Uh, yeah, anyway, John Carpenter, if you're watching, I hope you're doing well. And uh, let me know your thoughts about uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, we could chat about that. Uh, just leave your thoughts in the comments down there. So, yeah, anyway, yeah, the original topic, uh, They Live. Yeah, so it's a great movie. Yeah, he's uh, got the, uh, TV room, the magic TV remote, and he's finding the secrets about the world. And yeah, the more I look into things, like the secrets about the world, yeah, the stranger it gets, just this reality is basically, it, it's fake, it's not real. Like, like uh, it's just all like an illusion and everything, like it says in Buddhism. And uh, not that I'm trying to convince you, that's just what I think. But like, yeah, look into it, you'll find out, well, you find out it's true, basically. Uh, but only look into it if you really want to. Uh, not trying to force anybody. Yeah, so they lived. That, I guess that would be my take on it. It's a great movie, and uh, yeah, so he gets the remote, and then oh, then another guy he should, he, or not the remote. I said remote because I was talking about the TV remote. Oh, uh, the glasses. He gets the magic uh, sunglasses, and uh, he convinces another guy to wear it. He's he's saying, oh, you got to put these on. That uh, you're gonna you're gonna know the secrets if you put these sunglasses on, and then he tells him he's like, no man, I don't want to, and they get in a a fist fight and he forces the sunglasses on him and then he, he realizes he's like oh shit he, he wasn't joking he's this is legit and um and they team up and then they go after the bad guys the uh you know like illuminati or whatever uh you know you're going after them and i think they go to a bank and they yeah they shoot up the bad guys and that has the, the line the Duke Nukem line, yeah, that came from They Live, where he says, like, I came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. Yeah, that's from They Live, originally. So a lot of people that like Duke Nukem, those video games, that that's where that line, yeah, that, that came from They Live. That's a reference, uh, I guess. Not a lot of people probably realize that. Uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so I guess... In a nutshell, those are F. Gardner's thoughts on They Live. That's a great movie. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting question. Those are my thoughts on that. Um, it's been a while since I watched that. But uh, yeah, uh, it's an underrated movie. More people should see that. So if you've never seen They Live by John Carpenter, check that out. Yeah, that's really good. It's an older movie, but like I was saying before, a lot of the best movies are the older stuff. And uh, yeah, it's one of those movies where you find little hidden truths, like how it said, like how the Truman Show, it's about Flat Earth, how he lives in a dome, the Flat Earth dome, everything is fake. They won't let him go past the Antarctic ice walls. He tries to go at the end and he can't, there's a barrier and he has, he has to go the door to the way out. And the Matrix, it's about Buddhism, that this is all simulation. They use the term samsara. Uh, so not simulation in the computer sense necessarily, but fake, illusory, that's empty. It's not real, it's fake. So yeah, and They Live is like that. It's one of those movies too, where they talk about the hidden whatever secrets about things and the evil people controlling them, the controlling everybody. And I get, yeah, the bad guys, they look weird too. And, uh, once he puts on the sunglasses and they live, they look kind of like, like, I guess like reptilians or whatever. Yeah, I need to do a video about that still. I've talked a little bit about that. Yeah, those are reptilian stuff. Don't laugh that off. That's we're, like, we're, why do you think so many people believe in that? And why do you think so many different religions talk about like serpent and snake-like stuff? That, well, anyway, that's where it comes from. Uh, I'll get into that another video yeah i'll definitely have to do a reptilian video at some point because that's one of those conspiracies that's true it, it sounds crazy when you first hear about it like all conspiracies i guess but yeah look into that um if you want to go down that rabbit hole too uh 
anyway, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. This is fun talking about. It's been a while since I watched that movie, and uh, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to watch that again. Definitely feel like it now. Okay. Bye, everybody.